Stories stir the soul. Stories reveal. And stories heal. In this podcast, we will give you an inside look at someone who's had a life-changing breakthrough. Real people, real stories with real breakthroughs. As a health and wellness expert and coach and Todd as a men's mentor, we've seen firsthand what God can do when it comes to a breakthrough. So lean in, listen well. This could be your biggest breakthrough. Hey there, and welcome to this episode of Your Biggest Breakthrough. I'm Wendy Pett. And I'm Todd Isburner, Wendy's (laughs) co-host. I'm your (laughs) (laughs) co-host. We're co-hosting together. Yes. Well, we are so excited today because we have an incredible guest on. He is a legend. Yes, he is. is so cool. We're talking baseball today. Baseball. Mm -hmm. Baseball legend. Yes. What about baseball? You know, I loved baseball growing up. Did you like baseball? I think it was America's sport. Everybody had to love baseball or you had to move to a different country. (laughs) I did. I played a lot of baseball as a kid. I really loved it. Had to take a little break because uh, I was catching one day and the batter decided to swing his bat all the way around and hit me smack dab in the head. Seriously? Knocked me out, had a concussion. And I thought, I think I better take a break. Is that what happened to you? Yeah, that's partly what happened. (laughs) Oh, man. I loved baseball too, but I I played softball because I'm a girl. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, don't make fun. But I did get, I got hit by the ball and they had Ah. to carry me off the field. Serious? Yeah. Are these going to be like war stories of our injuries? Because I have another one. I threw my arm out from (laughs) trying to get a baseball from center field all the way to home play. Listen, these are, these are lame. These are lame little compared compared to we're going to talk to what Ricky has been through. Oh Oh, my my word. There's no comparison. So uh, baseball legend and inspiration for the movie The Hill, Ricky Hill is his name, and he was born in Fort Worth, Texas to a poor Baptist preacher. He has had a symphony of trials in his life. Yeah, despite adversity from poverty, from bullying, do the braces on his legs, and then balancing expectations and dreams, Ricky's relentless pursuit of his passion in baseball made him one of the greatest hitters the game has ever seen. And that's how he got the nickname, The Hardest Hitter. And you will love seeing that develop in the film. Oh, my goodness. It's such a good movie. Yeah, his life is proof that every day is a canvas for growth. I love that. It's an opportunity to overcome hurdles and emerge stronger. And that's exactly what Ricky did. He emerged stronger. So we know you're going to enjoy the show. Well, welcome to your biggest breakthrough, Ricky Hill, the legendary Ricky Hill. We are so excited to have you. Glad to be here. Thank you. Yes. Now, we're going to take it easy on Ricky because he does interview after interview after (laughs) interview, but we're still going to pull a lot on him because your story is just about unbelievable. And when I say that word, some people are going to kind of shake their head. How in the world did he get through that? So let's let's go back to the beginning, Ricky. Um, First of all, you know, where you grew up and what happened uh, with this, uh, I don't, do we call it a disability that, that occurred in your life? I guess it is because, you know, when you're one, two, three, you don't remember a whole lot. Uh, four, you kind of start phasing through and kind of maybe figuring a few things out. But uh, I had quite quite a few surgeries between ages one and four. Huh. Wow. I can't tell you the exact amount, but but did find out later in life that it all it all tied in together with my spine with because i wound up with um the spine the degenerative spine disease and uh, i had very little spine in my disc when i was at 14 15 16 and uh Started feeling it pretty heavily then, going straight from the legs, then going into my spine. And um, and then playing sports at the same time, that kind of tough to do. <laughs> well, the doctors must have been shaking their heads saying, what is this kid doing? Does he understand? Like his spine is deteriorating and his legs don't work. But how come that didn't stop you? <laughs> you kept picking up and The pain and, didn't stop you. Yeah, you kept picking up rocks and hitting them with sticks and, uh, and just kept pursuing sports. I did. I mean, I... I it was just well first of all I, i've told everyone hitting rocks was free and we didn't have any money so that's all i did was hit rocks continuously so um so that's i just got to stop for a minute because people have got to go see this movie but i think that's really well depicted and i kept wondering too well did ricky just not know how to get a hold of a bat somewhere like he's always using a stick at a rock <laughs> yeah yeah but i th- didn't i didn't have a bat a glove ball anything of the sort, but, you know, I'd always see people 
see kids that had them. We didn't. You know, my dad was a, a Baptist minister. We traveled on the road and uh, from six or seven different towns and uh, never, ever had a dime to our name. And um, so I just, everywhere we went, I would just hit rocks, even wearing certain different, t- I wore different types of braces all the time. My dad made most of them. Wow, really? Yeah. Interesting. Did, well, yeah, he would get whatever they kind of like, kind of like what the patent was or what it looked like. And then he would make the braces himself because we couldn't afford to buy them. They were so expensive. Wow. So, wow. Well, if I were to look up the word perseverance, I have a feeling your picture would be next to the word because, again, we watched the movie The Hill and it, it had us in tears and moments and we were just, you know, jaw dropped at, at how you just kept going and pushing for the love of the game of baseball and to see just the interaction uh, with you and your family and but mainly this perseverance that you have. Now, do you think you were just born with this perseverance or uh, were you just um, working out your your guy thing by, <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, growing up, true. pushing through it by doing no. baseball? No, not ever. I, I, it's interesting that you said the word perseverance. That's what I wanted them to name the movie. Ah. Mm. Was perseverance. Mm. Uh, not really the hill because see, the hill is not even really me. Hill, just because my name is Hill, the hill is a pitcher's mound. Yeah. That's what the hill is. Uh, yeah. And that's where yeah. everything took place was on that pitcher's mound mm-hmm. between me. And it doesn't show it in the movie, but but that's where it all took place, where I got my chance to shine. And that one big night that I had that chance, it took place earlier that day on the pitcher's mound on the hill. Wow. Wow. And uh, but saying that, as far as perseverance is concerned, in the book of James, I'd read it over and over and over again. Uh, and uh, I, I, I didn't know any, 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 I didn't know anything different than perseverance mm. and uh to receive that you know i know it takes works because bible says with you know without you know faith without works is dead mm-hmm. right and uh you can have all the faith in the world but if you don't work for it you're not getting it ah uh, yeah you won't get so anywhere. good so good so ricky you grew up in a christian home your dad's a baptist preacher um and that in itself probably brought some challenges to you in terms of, you know, how you were to behave and whatnot. But how did you come to your own personal faith, that realization that, you know, Jesus is Savior and Lord in your life? How did that happen? Well, I mean, when you get bombarded every day with it from your father, it kind of that's a head start in itself. But um, I had um, I said I accepted Christ at seven years old and uh um thought that i was going to be a minister because my father was so i just went out in the backyard start preaching to everybody or whoever <laughs> could listen i got there and just preach and just beat the snot out of this big chair <laughs> and uh, um thought that i was going in the ministry mm. but at the same time i would go out and hit rocks all day long too and i'm doing both of them and uh but then I would hit like I'm, I might hit, hit a continuous rocks for 10, 12 hours in a day. Really? Yeah, I did. And uh, of course, that wasn't any help on my spine any, but uh, uh, it's uh, something that I enjoyed. And, and I had such a good eye for the for the for the uh, rock that uh, I realized that, you know, I'm pretty good at this. And, uh, mm. and I then then when baseball came around where I was able to start playing ball and I yanked the braces off and jumped in the game and I just started tagging them right out of the gate. I was just hitting, I was hitting home run after home run. Ah, But that's just it. I mean, any great athlete has put in the time they've done, they've put in the discipline and whether it's a, a rock and a stick or a bat and a ball, you put in the time and you mastered those home runs. And I think that that's so cool. How did your family handle maybe the um, disappointing news, if you will, that you would never have full use of, of your legs when they, when you were told that? Yeah. Especially what because you're out there wanting to play sports. Yeah. 
but you're getting the doctor's reports that this is not going well for you. How did your, yeah, how did your, your family parents, handle, yeah, they handle it? Well, I mean, they, from what I can remember uh, about that, uh, of course, it did, there was disappointment there, but um, they kind of knew that I wouldn't stop either. Mm. I wouldn't stop fighting. They knew it. They is in my blood. Huh. Is in my mother's blood, and uh, I never stopped. I never stopped. And and next thing you know, it's it. I had worked so hard at running and mm. becoming, be, trying to become a ball player that. Uh, it, it finally just hit. It all connected. And, uh, uh, now, like, in the mo- in the movie, your father really, really uh, has a desire for you to be a pastor as well, right? Yes. And yes, so he yes. speaks certain words over you about you not being um, legit to play ball. How did that affect you, hearing those words out of your dad's mouth? So often. Well, he was saying he said it the correct way because, yeah, he's he was bothered because he's afraid I'd go and get myself hurt. Sure. Uh, sure, I got picked on all the time from, you know, kid wearing, you know, braces and things. But it it made me stronger. Didn't do anything but make me tougher, stronger. Uh, I wasn't afraid to hit anybody. To be honest with you. Mm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I toughened uh, you up. Yeah, I wasn't afraid of that at all. It made me tough that way, and uh, and actually, my legs even got grew really large because of the fact that it had to work so hard. Yeah. Mm, the resistance, then, yeah, yeah. So, and then um, after um, after I got when I took the braces off, and I know you probably saw it in the film where um, that actually that happened exactly the way it happened, mm. and. Uh, I yanked them off, and I never put them on again. Wow, that's um, I, it's like it seems like just miraculous, really. Yeah, so I, <laughs> that that leads me to ask, uh, Ricky, were you praying for God to heal your legs all through this time, or were you just assuming that it's just going to happen because you're just going to keep pushing through it? Well, yeah, of course, I prayed all the time as a young boy. I mean, I knew the books of the Bible uh, forwards and backwards. Mm-hmm. At, you know, five and six years old. Uh, both ways and uh and so i you know my dad had taught us how to pray and you know went to went through all this but but how did you keep your how did you keep your faith alive uh for so long when you're you know when your legs weren't being healed you know i'm sure you were asking god just miraculously heal my legs and let me get let me get going but it took a long time so how'd you keep your faith alive i knew it was coming ah that's it love that you had that great expectation expectation. That's it. Yeah, I knew I knew it was coming, mm. and uh, so good. Huh. And it did, and it did. It came, and the day that I yanked the brace off, that was even the best thing that ever happened. And uh, from that day forward, I never had to really look back on that problem. But little did I know, I had another problem that was looming, you know, that was lurking in my life, which was my spine. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just think someone listening right now needed to hear what you just said that you expected the miracle, that you expected to be healed, that you expected that, because I think that tends to be people's kind of stuck point, if you will. They don't have that belief, right? And great expectations. So they, that's so awesome. Yeah, that's so awesome. Well, you know, you you were just <clears throat> driven to play Major League Baseball. Like that was just like on your mind. Um, what what really drove you to believe that you could play major league baseball? I mean, with that great expectation, especially because uh, you're kind just, of faith yeah, that just, you have anyway. You just hit rocks. Just knew, you just knew you were that great. <laughs> well, uh, my brother was five years older than me, and I went out with them and I played with them. And uh, when I was better than them, and they're five years older, it kind of lets you know that um, you kind of got it. Got a gift. Yeah, you know, it's it's it is a gift, and uh, um, I had broken all the records in little league, and did some couple things in little league that's never still happened today. Wow! And, like what? Uh, I'm we're just curious. Well, I've had I pitched one game that I struck out twenty one straight batters. Oh wait, my wait word! A wait a minute, we didn't know you pitched. <laughs> I didn't too. know that either. Okay, yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> oh, I did. I could do any. I I even I won the Golden Glove Award. 
in high school at third base. Nobody knew, knows that either. But, wow. So there's a lot of things there. I could do anything with the ball. Mm. And, well, you, uh, you were known as the hardest hitter. How did that, how did, who, who attached that name to you? Uh, actually, Red Murph did, my scout. He's the guy that signed Nolan Ryan. Mm. And uh, he attached it because uh, uh, I hit a lot of line drives back at people. Uh, okay. yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, watching the movie, uh, I mean, it's obvious that you just continue to persevere, you continue to believe, and you continue to practice hitting, hitting, hitting all the time. And I you think, wouldn't take no for an answer. That's right. Yeah. You were so determined, but you also had this ability to hit it so hard, so far. I know practice was part of it, but there's some young baseball players, some kids want to know, well, what was his technique? There must have been something Ricky was doing different to be able to hit it so far and so hard. Yeah, there was a technique. Uh, you either got it or you don't. Mm. <laughs> That's good. That's something you can't teach. No. Ah, you can't okay. teach it. Well, that you, either have it, you either have it or you don't. <laughs> it's and the it's gift. You can build on it. You can yeah. build on with it, uh, right? You can work in the batting cage all day long, which is good. But me, all those years swinging all those rocks, I developed a really, really, really good swing, mm. and uh, it, it just taught me a lot. And and then when I got uh, to to actually getting to hit a real baseball bat and a and a and a ball, uh, that ball seemed awfully uh, large. Mm. You know, it just seemed huge because you can't miss it. <laughs> no, I'm used to hitting rocks with right. a stick, huh. and so. But like I said, either you have it. Or you don't, mm. and you build on from what you have mm. and go forward. Because yeah. if you don't have it, you might as well just pick another sport. Mm. That's such good That's advice so good. for all aspects of life. If, if you have it, build on it. And that takes some work. It takes some patience. It takes some discipline. But you got to keep working on it. Yeah, yes. but why, why do you think so many people quit the hard thing mm. so quickly? whether it's in sports or life in general? Well, they don't have it. They mm. don't have it. They And they don't have the desire. And they 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 know that they're not going to get there. Uh, and plus, just downright lazy, being mm. lazy, and not willing to give your time to, to uh, put into your game to make it better. Mm. And because uh, I had to work for everything. Like I said, faith... Without works is dead, right? Yeah, right. Okay. Right. So you got to have that faith first, and then you put that work in, and then that's when that perseverance comes into play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hey, Ricky, I would just want to back up for a minute uh, in the relationship with your dad. I think uh, Dennis Quaid plays your dad, and I'm assuming you were you were happy with his performance. It was just a just a great depiction of what life was like in your family. Um, we're assuming we yeah, weren't yeah, there. Right. that's right <laughs> so but your your dad was i mean so committed to what god called him to do uh was there a tension that you felt because to please dad it would mean no baseball and you're going to be a pastor preacher but to feel like you're fulfilling your calling you want to play baseball so how did you how did you and your dad handle that tension well i mean i, I just told my father that i mean it was it was basically my fault for even uh, for even letting him know I wanted to preach because uh, I'm the one who went outside and took the pulpit out there. I'm the one who was preaching to them around the house mm. and uh, my brothers and all of them, and uh, they uh, they basically um, just knew I was going to be a preacher. You had but, that gift as well. Yeah, I really yeah. did, but but in, at the in, at the end of the game or day or should I say at the end of the day, I had I had known that uh, baseball was my love, and if I wanted to minister, I could minister through baseball because mm. Lord good. knows they need it. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, so um, when I started developing my my game, my talents, especially in high school, hitting the baseball so far. And then uh, just it, I kept growing in it, and uh, and uh, I didn't want I didn't want to stop. I didn't want to give this up. This was 
too much, too much for me. I had to have it. So talk about that for just a minute, because you actually, you, you were, you were almost destined to be a major league baseball player. You actually got there, but what happened after that? Well, once I got, once I got there, uh, my spine did collapse. Just like they said, uh, they tell me that I would collapse on the field. I did. Mm. Um, uh, and then at this very same time, my dad became ill with cancer. My mother came down with a brain tumor at the very same time. Mm. And um, it was a, just a, a devastating moment for us. And, uh, and that's when uh, I dove in head first at second base and I couldn't, I couldn't feel my legs. Mm. Oh, my goodness. But they told me it was going to happen. So I, I was actually prepared for it. I knew it was coming. You know, and, okay. uh, but I did. I knew it was coming, but yet I didn't. Again, I didn't care. I was just going <laughs> to play wanted, no matter what. It didn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Just we're always going all out. I just love that. Such a great lesson for us. If he was going to run at home. Yeah, I'll play the right. Slide into home base. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Just keep going for it. If you got the it, like Ricky said. Yeah. Then do it. something about it. Yeah. Yeah. Now here's a question, Ricky. I'm I'm curious. Is there ever a time when you would tell someone that, yeah, you should quit, you should surrender? And how do you discern <laughs> that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I said that probably 90% of the time. Really? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people, it's just a waste of time for them. They didn't have the desire to make it happen. Like, so, like I, I use this phrase in golf, you need to take two weeks off, then quit. <laughs> <laughs> that's good that's good that's true especially, you, especially if you don't have it yet <laughs> yeah if you don't have it yeah yeah that's good if, that's uh, good quit. so with everything happening i know this this big premiere is is happening the movie is uh launching on uh debuting on the tw 25th that's so exciting and it's such a great movie everyone listening needs to go oh, and man. see the movie but um what are you doing now ricky uh, I'm a financial planner and, right. um, I, um, right now I'm getting ready to work with my couple of my grandkids and their baseball skills and they're very, very talented. Oh, I bet. Yeah. If they won, I wouldn't be working with them. Now, wait, do you give them a bat and a ball or do you give them a stick and a rock? I don't have, you, you know, it's interesting. <laughs> Fortunately, their father had a lot more money than we did. <laughs> they get the real, they get the real thing. Uh, I never did. I have to wonder though, if maybe a stick and a rock is the way to go. <laughs> no, it actually is. It'd be, it'd be a good way to start period for anyone because uh, that object's very small. And uh, once you learn to hit that small object, it, uh, it becomes easier to hit that larger one. Mm. Yeah, that's so good. Well, what are your hopes with this movie, Ricky? What do you really want people to take away from this movie um, that, yeah, what what are your hopes for it? Well, um, I hope that um, I hope the people that that um, when they when they walk in and then walk out that the people that are the non believers has a great chance of believing. You know that miracles do happen, yes. and they happen. They happen through Christ, if you mean it. If you step up to the plate, use His guidance, and then the and also even the believers. I hope that they uh, they do like I did and try to take it to another level. Mm, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I can guarantee that you go see that film and you will come away inspired. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, like I, I was all charged up after I saw it, realizing again, if you put your mind to something, you want it bad enough. If you have that it that you were talking about, you're trusting God and you're working with him. You're doing your part. Good things are going to occur. That dream or that vision or that calling is going to be fulfilled, but not without pain and discipline and trial and error and perseverance and ricky you're the epitome of perseverance when i think of ricky i think of perseverance Seriously. And I, I just uh, just appreciate the way you've lived your life and how that is affecting so many others well you know i'm glad it is because it's interesting that even when i was a, a kid and uh 
12 all the way to 14 years old, we we have a, a ballpark that we would play at that have five fields. And um, all those five fields, when I would get up to bat, uh, they'd announce my name on, in, on the on-deck circle. And all the parents and all of them would come down just to see me hit. Then they'd go back to, to where their kids were playing. You know, they come back, see me hit, and go back, see their kids playing. That's cool. <laughs> so, That's kind, so of a, kind of a hey, neat thing. And I never even yeah. really, re- really even knew uh, that. Did you ever play, uh, you know, did you ever do the Babe Ruth thing where you pointed, uh, you know, for the no. home run? <laughs> no, <laughs> that's, that's kind of That's kind of cocky. <laughs> That's kind of that's cocky. And <laughs> that's not you your gotta, nature. You got to be careful. Don't ever show the picture up because the next uh, time that ball will be thrown right at your head. <laughs> okay. That's gotcha. right. That's right. Uh, you know, one of the most uh, most moving scenes uh, for me, really, there were a couple. That scene when your dad came to that game, that mm-hmm. was really, mm-hmm. wow. Uh, but the other crying. one is, when <laughs> man, when you took those braces off and you said that was depicted pretty realistically, man, that was just like, that's the breakthrough. That's the payoff for that faith, that perseverance, that hard work. Uh, man, I'm just getting goosebumps and thinking about decision. it because that was very powerful. It's actually a decision, too, to break break yeah. free, right? Yeah. yeah, nobody told you oh. to take those off. You did. Yeah. 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 I mean, by the way, my dad my dad built them. Uh, the last, I guess, those, those, the, those pair there he built, I did wear some that under my pants, under my jeans. I would had to get real big jeans. Or, but because I didn't want everybody seeing me. Sure. Yeah. yeah just it's embarrassing. You know, sure. it's so embarrassing. And uh, like, uh, I think uh, I started finally wearing them on the outside when I was six years old. Uh-huh. So I wore them six, seven and eight on the outside of my pants because I had to. But um, yeah, the day that I broke those off was like being set free. Yeah. You know, finally. There it is. Um, I have freedom. So cool. So good. Mm. Well, who has been your biggest uh, inspiration uh, for the with the game of baseball? Uh, Mickey Mantle. Mm. Mickey Mantle for sure. Mickey Mantle and Willie Mays. Those uh-huh. two right there. Uh, Legends in their own right, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. The, the ultimate. Well, um, we. We are so thrilled to have you on your biggest breakthrough because you literally broke through so many different barriers in your life. And yeah. so thank you for um, just being willing to to create this movie so that others can um, feel like we felt yeah. and we saw it and, and be ready and charged up to do what God's called us to do, right? Without Absolutely. any, Absolutely. any, uh, any uh, stipulations of, of what may be going on in our life circumstances. So. Very cool. Well, we thank you so much for being on. If you were to uh, just kind of wrap up this interview with, with kind of um, something, this is different. Not not one word of who who would how you describe yourself, but give us something different, like something that nobody would know about Ricky Hill. What's something that you like to do? What's like a hobby? Um, is there something that is way outside the box that we'd say, "Wow, that's interesting." He's probably hitting. He's probably hitting four hundred yard drives on the golf course or something. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. I'm he's doing like, that yeah, too. of course I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm doing that too. Yes, uh, no. Like Happy Gilmore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. Um, I had um I had um I've kind of kind of learned this that someone out there always has it worse than you do. Mm. And I look at this, there's so many people that complain about what you have, and here I am. I've broken, I don't know, I think. I don't know about a bone in my body I haven't broke, but yet um, I'm real. I'm real thankful because of um, um, I've got through all of that. I take and I take a product that helps me tremendously, and also saying that I um, uh, realize one thing: there's always someone out there worse than you are. Mm-hmm. That's right. You may be feeling sorry for yourself, but I promise you there's somebody next door, two houses down, that's worse than you are. Yeah. And so I learned, you know, not to take that for granted mm-hmm. at all. It's good. I, it's good. I, don't, I don't even, like to me, I don't, I don't even feel hardly any pain anymore because I, I, pain is what I've been through all my life. 
I'm sure your tolerance That's level is way up. Yeah. Great, yeah. great perspective though. There's always somebody who's got it worse than you. So yeah. it helps you avoid the pity parties and uh, you know, don't we need to spend any time there. Just think about others. So Ricky, Absolutely. thank you, man. You are an inspiration. Big you time. are a, a shining light and uh, just love the way you've lived your life and the way you've taught us uh, how to persevere. So we uh, thank you for having me. We pray yeah. God's blessings on you and uh, that many, many will go see the movie. I think it's going to be released in like 2,000 theaters. So yeah. everybody's going to have a chance to see it. I hope it does really, really well. Yeah. God's yeah. blessings on you. They're going to have their chance. And you know you know as well as I do, we're in the last days, my friend. He's given us, God right now has given us this probably just one last chance. Too many things are happening. Right now, that's it's our been time. and it's happened right in front of our eyes. Yeah, and things that I thought as a child that was already happening, it that's way too early. But now, it's a different story. No one has seen the world like it is today. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's it's right. a mess. It's a mess. I thank God. It's about time for God to clean it up. Yeah, yeah. Jesus but said, uh, "He who perseveres to the end will be saved," and we've got every that's, reason. That's, in it's the correct. world to persevere. So, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing your story. God bless you, my friend. Thank, and thank uh, we'll you, talk man. to you soon. Take right. care. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Bye -bye. Blessings on you. Bye bye. Bye. Well, we hope you enjoyed this episode of Your Biggest Breakthrough with the legendary Ricky Hill. He so is, uh, I've said it many times during our interview, he truly is an inspiration. Yeah. Watch this movie, mm. and you cannot leave that theater without feeling like there's there's more to what you can do, like you haven't quite done enough yet. There's an ability to persevere that you didn't know you had. Yeah. And you're honestly, you're going to learn that from watching this movie and how Ricky lived his life. Yeah. God's not done with you yet, no matter what you're dealing with. So you can overcome. You can, mm -hmm. and you must, if you want must. to really be true to what you believe God has called you to do and who he's called you to be. Yeah. And like Ricky said, faith without works is dead. And I think that that's something that we really need to. Yeah. Uh, realize right like faith of that works we got to work we got to do our our part and and persevere no matter what we're dealing with but it was such a great interview but yeah definitely go see the hill it is an incredible movie and uh, if you're looking to persevere in your health and your well-being that's what i do if yeah, you're a you woman do. and you're looking for a breakthrough in your health and and, and need some uh, guidance there go to wendypet.com and i can assist you with your uh, she will push you she's, i will, she push will you. help you she i'll help you persevere you. i'll do the same if you're a guy and you're looking for some help i want some coaching in uh, areas of faith or finances or fitness or family relationships yeah. uh we're just really enjoying the progress we're seeing in men's life sure. as we uh, as we implement some of these strategies and principles so yep make sure you go to todd touch. Isburner.com. <laughs> All right, be blessed, and we'll catch you next time on Your Biggest Breakthrough. Head on over to yourbiggestbreakthrough.com where you'll find some free resources and information and a place where you can comment, and we would love to dialogue with you there. So thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.